good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Heyo and welcome today. Today you're joined by me, Daniel. And we also here have Brandon Dayton. How's it going? Yeah, you can check out their website at brandondayton.com. Um, you also have an Instagram and a lot of other social medias like YouTube. You can find them down there. Um, links will be in description as always. Um, yeah, welcome. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's great. Great to have another artist in here. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it's been you know a little while. I have I had one last week, um, but before mm -hmm. before then I hadn't had one for like about three ish months. Um, yeah, it's just been I've been busy. It's been hard to find mm -hmm. um, artists out there that have free time sometimes, and um, you know, yeah. So, so do you, is it? Is it, uh, uh, do you have other types of like guests or is it mostly you're doing your own content and every once in a while you, you invite like another artist on or something? Um, I try as much as I can to get guests in, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, but yeah, it, it depends on who I can find and, um, mm -hmm. everything like that. Um, I do, if I do need to, I make my own content, just uh, talk about a certain topic or something. If I've got one of these, mm -hmm. um, kind of me painting stream things um otherwise you know i might do something like i've done last year i did i went over my sketchbook um mm. i had this this challenge i did each week where i did four drawings a week um and mm. i talked about those drawings for a couple of months here and there um all sorts of different kind of videos that i i just do on the fly <laughs> So mm -hmm. it all depends. Um, I try to get us in each week, but it it depends on how busy I am, how busy um, other artists are, and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. It's great to to, to chat with you guys. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, tell me a bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, you you want to know as far as like art stuff is concerned, or you know, yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let's see. Let's see how far I want to go back here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i definitely one of those people that I think I've always had, like, a, a, a predisposition to make art. You know, I, was, I think it was pretty much in, in the cards. Um, yeah, I, like, I go all the way back to, uh, you know, I think kind of, like, fifth, sixth grade, you know, at that age. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know what the corresponding grades are in New Zealand, if they got some if it's different in schooling, but, um, uh, you know, probably 10, 11 around that age. That's when I started thinking like of, about mm -hmm. animation, I think, and, and thinking like, Oh, I really want to, I want to do animation, you know, watching like Disney movies and things like that. And, and then, you know, what I've wanted to do artistically has always changed. Uh, it's yeah. always kind of shifted around, shifted around quite a bit in my youth, but like wanting to do something artistic was always, uh, what interested me. So, you know, during it, it was comic books for a time and then back to animation. Then I was doing music. And then, you know, once I got into college, um, I went to a college that didn't have an animation department. Mm. And so I ended up st uh, studying film and I got really <sighs> absorbed into that. Um, and, uh, and then, but then when I got out of school, I just, the work I got was, was doing illustration. Oh, cool. And yeah. so, you know, I just, <laughs> one thing led to another and I was, I was working, uh, I think my first job out of school was, uh, working for a souvenir company I and know. I was just doing illustrations for souvenirs and I, I learned, that's how I learned all the tools. And then, um, I worked for a small animation advertising design, um, studio uh, and then the contacts I, I made there helped me get my first job into video games. Um, yeah. And, uh, did, did, I, I'm trying to remember exact, that's the exact time I spent. It was around three years at EA games. They had a branch in, in Salt Lake city, Utah. <laughs> um, I had about eight months. I was laid off from there, had about eight months doing freelance and doing my own thing. And then I got, uh, hired at, 
at uh, Disney Interactive. They also have a branch in Salt Lake City, had one at that time. Um, and that was, I spent about four years there. And so that was, those two studios have both since shut down, but, you know, had a really fantastic opportunity to work with some amazing artists and get some experience in, in, in gaming. Mm. Uh, and once I was done with that, I was, uh, you know, I'd always wanted to do comic books and actually, yeah, that's how I left, I left Disney because I had been really interested in doing comic books for a long time and just wasn't able to, to find the bandwidth to do it. Yeah, and so um, we kind of made the finances work. <laughs> my my wife went back to work, and you know I I was able to focus on on completing Green Monk. And so oh, cool. Um, I'm not totally sure what I've been doing since then. <laughs> try to <laughs> try to figure that out sometime. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for me, the thing that's always excited me the most is I've always felt a little bit like. Why, why don't I have like one really specific passion, you know, cause I, mm. I, I did film, but I was always like, oh, there's people in film that are like maybe more in, in it, into it than I am. And I did comics and I'm like, oh, there's people that are way more passionate about comics and making comics than I am. Mm. Um, and when it comes down to it, the thing that I'm most excited about and that makes me most passionate is like cr- just creating something new, mm. being able to yeah. kind of disrupt, disrupt people's kind of like the expectations or status quo of, of, of what life is, is meant to be or supposed to be. Um, I, and I like kind of like surprising, uh, surprising people or kind of opening up new ways of looking at things. And so, Mm. um, the medium has always shifted, but that's kind of at the core of, of what I find really interesting. So I guess that's kind of what's, what's brought me to where I am right now. Awesome. Yeah, we we have grades here. In, oh, grades. Um, we have years here for school system. So you know, uh-huh. it's, it starts off when you get to school year one, um, and you yeah. know preschools. Oh, preschool, uh, primary school we call it is you know year one to six. Then gotcha. You, have, you know, intermediate, um, where it's kind of a bit more learning in intermediate. They get you like all hyped up in each year. It's like in the end of each kind of thing, like end of year six. They're like, oh, intermediate's gonna be so hard. You have to do all this work and <laughs> you know get hyped up for that. And then you know you go into intermediate. So you know that difficult. But you know there are yeah. a lot of you start learning skills like you know we start learning like woodwork skills and um. Yeah bit of art and a lot of different aspects of things and then you know high school starts to shift into more um you know kind of specifics i guess but um sure depends on what kind of school you go to as well um yeah i I didn't for me i didn't make it all the way through school i think the um Mm -hmm. you know getting to the point where I wasn't that good at English, you know. Um, sure. So it was kind of wasting my time sitting around trying to make sure to get English right to try and pass school um, where I could have been doing something. So I went to design school after that. Um, well, but... yeah, I, 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 was, I was never a very good student myself. So I actually think I, I, I like failed failed one of my final classes my senior year so I didn't actually graduate from my high school because I didn't meet the qualifications for my high school so I got a diploma from like the district because I met the qualifications for the district uh, so yeah. I was like the one of only one of my friends that got like a, a district diploma whatever that means so I didn't graduate from high school technically <laughs> awesome yeah it sounds yeah. like an interesting uh life you've had going on um it's yeah, been pretty so far cool. yeah i think you know saying that you know you, you don't you kind of don't have kind of one clear path i guess um mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of good because you know for me it's just kind of the same thing i just want to create something um and mm-hmm. you know that has changed over the years you know um starting from just creating like designs and and posters t-shirts and um you know delved into creating creatures and then now i'm i'm 
pushing into a bit more children's books and things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the passion stays the same. It's the wanting to create something, wanting to paint something, um, and do something that's interesting and fun and <laughs> keeps the passion alive. Um, sure. Awesome. Um, I was wondering, have you ever done like an, an Inktober? Yeah, you know, um, I've I've known you know Jake Parker, the guy that that founded Inktober. I've known him quite a while, hmm. and so I remember like the first the first couple of years that he did Inktober. Um, I think I might have been one of one of the first people other than than Jake that participated in Inktober. Uh, well, if you go back, yeah. <laughs> if you go back and see my really old stuff, there was a year. I, what I did some Inktober stuff that was, I think I did like some, uh, Game of Thrones stuff is before the series came out, you know, it's just yeah, based yeah. on the book. Um, but yeah, yeah. I participated in Inktober for a few years. Awesome. Um, yeah. and, uh, eventually, you know, I, I, I kind of, there came, came months where there's just other things going on. Hmm. Um, but you know, I, I it was an inspiration enough that I, I did uh, organized a drawing challenge a couple of years ago um, that was kind of inspired by Inktober. Um, the approach that I took uh, uh, it was with a friend of mine, uh, Matthew Armstrong. We did a challenge called uh, Sketchbook Summer, and so yeah. we took we took a month in the summer, and the whole challenge was uh, it's about like drawing as much as possible within that month. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a different angle, yeah. Um, but it's extremely challenging. So you take a sketchbook, and the idea is you you need to fill fill a sketchbook during the course of a month. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, but uh, that's also, I mean, it's such a time consuming thing. I mean, even more so than trying to do one of those challenges, is trying to like organize one of those challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Preparing for it. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I did it two years, and after after the second year, I was just like, "Wow, this takes up too much time, and uh, I'm not really seeing much benefit out of it." So I just I just had to had to kind of let it go. But yeah, those type of challenges can be really fantastic. Mm, fair enough. Oh, um, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, were you doing other stuff at the time of doing the challenge, or just plainly doing that drawing in the schedule? No. Oh, okay. No, that's what made it challenging was this was at the time where I was trying to finish my comic book. So I was trying to work on on Green Monk. Uh, and this is this is kind of one of the challenge as, challenges as an artist, uh, you know, as you're trying to do self-promotion. You know, I'm, I'm trying to finish artwork. I'm trying to finish comics, but I'm also trying to do self-promotion, which is an entirely other task on top of, of, of making the artwork, which is a huge task in and of itself. And so when I, uh, when I started working on green monk, I I started a YouTube channel and tried to create content for that regularly. But like I said, that was also a huge task to, you know, try to, I was doing a video a week at one time. Mm. Um, uh, and so that's, that's a lot of trying to create original content and, um, And then doing something like Sketchbook Summer, that was even more so. It was like I just had to – I was creating a lot more content, posting more regularly to YouTube, filling up the sketchbook every day, but also trying to like uh, keep moving forward on the comics. So it was, it was just too, too much. It was too distracting. And I'm just I, – I don't have, I don't have that, the bandwidth to – you know, other people are like workaholics and they just – they are <laughs> able to fit in all those types of things. And that's just not me. I just have a limit to how much I can do. Yeah, fair enough, you know. Um, even, you know, with workaholics, um, eventually they're going to get burned out and, you know, don't want to work or, yeah. you know, want to take some time off or, you know, something like that comes. Yeah, there's some people that are amazing. They just seem to have, like, an endless supply of energy. But, yeah, that's not me, and I just mm. – I, I definitely get burned out. I, I push myself to a certain point, and I've seen it happen with a lot of artists. I mean, because that's, that's – that we have this story, and I mean, this is this is a very American story, but I mean, I'm sure it applies to lots of people. There's this whole narrative that you you know you hustle hard enough and and you can make it happen. Mm. Um, and there's there's more to the equation than hustle. 
I've seen a lot of guys hustle pretty hard and, you know, they're able to create some cool stuff, but it, it doesn't always guarantee success, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's like sprinting, isn't it? You know, if you sprint too fast, you're just going to lie down on the ground halfway through the race or something. If you if you take your pace, um, you know, you'll get there at, at some yeah. stage. You won't be so burned out and you just you'll be happy that you got there um, in the end. Yeah, I'm much more convinced of that, that if, if, if you do, if there is something that you want to set your mind to, I think a daily commitment is better than some sort of like enormous, enormous commitment. And, and the more you can, you can, you can simplify your commitments, the better, you know, cause it, you can really get to the point where it's like, I'm trying to do this every day and this every day and this every day. And it's like, yeah. You know, the more you can focus on one thing and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to commit to do it. Like right now, I'm just, I'm trying to do some writing every day. Yeah. Like that's kind of the commitment I've made is I just do an hour, you know, maybe two where I just sit down and do some writing and, and, uh, yeah, it feels like rejuvenating. It's, it's, but I mean, you can push yourself to a point where almost anything is going to, it's going to be, it's going to be grilling. It's not going to be like, it's not going to be like enjoyable. So, Yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you, you sell art. I was wondering when you started selling your art. Well, Hmm. I mean, I guess selling art means you're making it available to sell, but it doesn't necessarily people mean people are going to buy it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I've, uh, let's see the first time I really made my stuff available to sell. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, maybe in high school I sold some t-shirts or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, had a, I mean, I had a band in high school technically where, <laughs> where, you know, people had to pay to get in, into the shows. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I've always tried things here and there. I mean, as soon as I had the option over the internet, I was, I was trying to, uh, to sell things, whether it's through Etsy or on my, on my own website, uh, or whatever. Um, and I've really had mixed results, um, uh, some of some of my best successive, my, I've had some successes here and there of, of selling stuff that is things that have been popular, but they've been pretty few and far between. So I mean, my first uh, um, my first mini comic, my first Green Monk mini comic that I did was was relatively successful for a, a self published mini comic. Uh, it was it uh, was selected for the Yalsa um, Great Graphic Novels for Teen book list which is, is kind of a, it's an American youth library association yeah. kind of recommendation of, of, of books. Um, and, uh, it was on the same year that Raina Telgemeier, uh, was selected. Smile was selected that same year. I think there was a Doug Tenapple title. I think ghost city was on it. Yeah. Um, and so that one, that one's sell, sold pretty well. I sold to a lot of libraries and I would go to conventions and, and it was really by how well that would sell at conventions. Um, but yeah, and conventions, I've just, I, conventions, well, there was a time when I did really well at conventions and, and there's something about conventions now that they just, they just suck. I can't sell <laughs> anything at conventions. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. The same with, um, like here, I did one at one time. We have, um, uh -huh. Armageddon and, you know, okay. you hear the stories about yeah, each year, how they're making less and less sales and uh, what's going oh, on, yeah. that kind of thing, you know, but um, some people do well and, and some people don't, you know, some, some years, you know, people do better than others, you know, but it's a luck of the joy, you know, you never know if um, you're going to win or, or lose there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think there's there's something to do with the economics there that they've just changed over time. Mm. I don't know if like the convention organizers are finding more ways to kind of like like kind of suck funds out of guests so that there's there's mm. less discretionary funds to spend. I don't know if yeah. conventions have become more crowded where it's just like now you just have so much fan art and everything that it's just like you're getting such a small piece of piece of the pot. You know, yeah. the one exception, yeah. the one I really really enjoyed that I did uh 2019, I did Heroes Con, which is one in in the states that happens in uh, Charlottesville, I believe, and uh, that one was uh, 
that one was fantastic. And it's great because it's, it's curated. So they're really trying to, to have like the best artists they can there. And it's, that's where people go for commissions. So people that want commissions, they go to heroes con. So that one was really cool. Cause I was doing the com- commissions the whole time, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's pretty rare as far as conventions go. Most conventions you go, go to, and it's just, it's very broad appeal. Like they've got yeah. the celebrities, they've got the anime mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, um, and it's, and they just, they want to sell as much booth space as possible. So you're just competing yeah. with like hundreds of other artists selling all of their fan art, mm-hmm. you know? So That's, I don't know. I don't yeah. think I'm, it's going to, it's going to be a while before I do connect conventions again, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, well, with the pandemic and all, it's making it oh, more challenging. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, I think, you know, with some places, yeah, they do want to fill up the space and, um, you know, each meter has a person in it. Uh, they want to make, you know, the the people running it want to make as much money as they can. Um, yeah. We've had that where, you know, I think I went uh, maybe four years ago four or five years ago and um you know that all the celebrities and stuff were like free to go and get a their signature and go um to see them talk and listen and, and ask questions that was all free um now these days you have to pay a fee to to go in the line to get That's their right. signature these days yeah. and in the same with um maybe going to see one of their live talks um I think some were free, but some you have to like pay to to go and see them talk and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely gone downhill in that aspect of things. You know, um, that people are yeah spending all their money, you know, seeing these celebrities and um, just the other things they have to pay to get in the door um, is not exactly cheap either. Sometimes, um, so. You know, my thoughts is that spending a lot more money getting in the door and everything that, you know, their leftover money isn't spent as much <laughs> on. You now, know. are there, are there down there, are, are there any like, uh, um, kind of smaller independent shows? Do you have anything like that? Uh, no, we, mostly, you know, we do, um, fairs around here. Um, so okay. it's just, you know, markets and things that, uh, you, you go sell. I, I've been with my mum a, a few times. She sells like, um, hand knitted toys. Um, okay. and dad also sells things here and there, you know, um, he's selling like bead art and, um, his wooden toys sometimes, you know, all sorts of things. Um, there does, and I go, I've been a few times and i just i wasn't making sales so i was like nah you Mm -hmm. know yeah (laughs) not for me um gotcha i was like now i'll I'll, I'll stop this and just focus on you know my youtube channel and and painting and um moving forward that way (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, I, I really wonder if, if like, uh, the thing that I think is most interesting is kind of the trend of, of smaller shows. Anytime I see, like, the really big comic shows, those ones just, those ones I'm not interested. But there's smaller shows now, and they have kind of stricter rules. And so, like I said, yeah, we've got yeah. things like Heroes. Another good one is is TCAF, which is one in Toronto, which is really focused on independent creators. And they, like, have restrictions on, like, you, can, you know, it isn't. They, I think they restrict cosplay and you have to be selling. It's only people selling books Yeah, yeah. and there's SPX, which is also c- kind of more focused on that. But that one's very diff- It's by lottery to get into that. So I haven't mm. made the cut yet, Yeah. but it remains to be seen how that's going to evolve over time, you know? Yeah. And there's, um, light box as well, which is awesome. I've went, um, to the digital version last year, which was awesome. okay. Um, yeah, they, you know, what they did is they had like a schedule online, um, Mm -hmm. you know, to kind of pay to get in, but some of it, you know, some people could have not paid and still saw some of the stuff, you know, they had people streaming on YouTube, people streaming on Twitch, um, Mm. some of the events were on like Zoom and, you know, exclusive things, 
I managed to get into like two of them, I think, um, two mm-hmm. Zoom call things, um, because you know only so many people can go into a Zoom call. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was quite cool, and yeah, that was a amazing event. I, um, it went kind of all day and all night, so I was really really wow. tired by the end of the the, the <laughs> weekend um I, th- I think i took like an extra day off or something no that's right i booked it so it's, it was four days um so i had the three days of watching the, the the streams and everything and then the next day to recover um yeah it was... now do they do they does this light bulb normally have like a location where they will do the the convention or is it always like an online thing it, it was in 219 they had a convention okay. um and then because of the pandemic their 2020 gotcha. was online um and they also with that they also had like um a big open space 3d world thing where you could go like mm-hmm. f- view all these artists artwork like like oh, you were walking like you were walking around an actual convention which was quite cool to see hmm. um i i didn't get time to, to to see that all but i did have a, a look see at some of the artists that were in there um but yeah that would have been pretty cool to you know have a sp- virtual space as well um mm-hmm. yeah hey with vr maybe that's something that can happen at some point they don't have to they don't have to fork out you know a bunch of money on a hotel room yeah you know <laughs> i can just go to convention from you know mm. comfort of my own home yeah yeah that would be um pretty cool just to, to... <laughs> yeah. awesome um yeah, you're you're talking a little bit. You talked a little bit about your YouTube channel. Um, mm-hmm. So you know how how did that start? Well, yeah, it was initially the idea was was for it to be a promotional vehicle um, for my work, and so the most the most uh, attention that I gave to it was really during that period when I was uh, working on Green Monk, I'm trying to remember exactly the year that I really started focusing on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say like maybe 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I went, I was just trying to be consistent with that, trying to do some weekly content uh, with the YouTube channel. Um, and actually, I mean, I, I got a, a relatively good response. So um, a hand, I've had a handful of videos on there that have, have, have taken off. Um, and I, I, um, all I, all I add to my YouTube channel now is, um, uh, video versions of my podcast. So I have a podcast, um, uh, called how to be an artist, um, where I talk with artist friends, but other people I find <laughs> interesting. And, um, that's really all I, I'm, I'm putting up to my YouTube channel now. Um, but even without me putting up like really new content, it's still gained subscribers. I'm at 30,000 subscribers right now with the YouTube channel. Um, but I mean, all that having been said, like I've not been able to do anything useful with that. I don't know at what point you have enough subscribers that, that it's in any way financially beneficial, Mm -hmm. but I, I really tried my best to try to use it, to try to help, uh, promote sales of my comic. And I, I didn't see anything, anything much come out of that. Mm. Um, honestly, I mean, definitely there was, there's a really cool community there. some, some regulars that were very supportive of the comic. Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a real translation into sales from, from all of the investment I put into it to YouTube. Mm. So, um, it's, uh, this stuff's still like a blast to make. I, I still really enjoyed creating a lot of the content. I mostly did the stuff I did the most was just me drawing while I, and I'd have some sort of topic I would discuss. Um, but the stuff that's always the funnest to do and that usually gets the best traffic is when I would do, um, you know, little tutorials, explanations, things like that. Uh, my most popular video to date is one called the first thing you should learn to draw which is basically explaining how to draw like primitives, like how to draw cubes and, mm-hmm. and cylinders and, yeah. and um, you know, build things out of that. So yeah, mostly the tutorials seem like that's where all most of the traffic comes from. Yeah. 
But I did also have one video that did pretty well where I talked about uh, deciding to, to quit Disney. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, interesting experience. I think, uh, you know, yeah. something uh, I may re revisit at some point, you know. I can see why that would get views, you know, they're quitting Disney. Because um, mm -hmm. people would be like, oh, we want to work for Disney. It's like, why this person quit for <laughs> Disney? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. That, why? You know. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's. I think that's. I mean, that's definitely the the state of mind I was in too, because I had all these ambitions of of where I wanted to work. And you know, just to be clear, I mean, it's not like I was working for Disney Feature. Mm. I think I had some comment on my YouTube channel the other day that was like, "Hey, did you ever like suggest an idea for a movie or something on Disney?" And I'm like, "No, I was. You know, I was working for the game studio, so." Um, yeah, yeah. Def definitely a different part of, of Disney, but <laughs> but even then, the studio in Salt Lake City is kind of was kind of had a reputation as as being like the best, where the best artists in in Utah were was were at this particular studio. So there was a kind of an ambition to be there, just because I knew there was so much talent there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, after being there, I spent about four years there, and it was the type of thing where. Like at parties, it's like great to be like tell people like, "Hey, I work at Disney." And people are like, "Oh, wow, you work at Disney? That's really cool." Yeah. Um, but I just knew for myself that it it wasn't satisfying. Like this, what as a child, what I wanted when I had ambitions of working for Disney wasn't really fulfilled by me being at this studio. Mm. And so I kind of had to figure out like, what is it that I really wanted? What is it that I I I had I had been fantasizing about as a child? Um, and how much of that even mattered to me anymore. And so I just kind of realized that like working at this place really wasn't satisfying me, you know, personally, um, professionally. Um, and it, it was, could be really stressful at times too. So I just had to decide to, to take a different direction. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how did you kind of move, I guess, in that direction? Um, Hey, Gray. Oh, hold on, I got to talk to my son. Close that door, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um. Yeah, I was saying, how did you move in that direction? You know, was it a few years? And You mean of deciding to leave? Yeah. Yeah, well, the seeds have been planted for that quite a long time ago, actually. I mean, I, I never really had any ambitions to work in video games. I've always wanted it to, to to be an independent creator in some way. So going all the way back, I've always been like, I want to tell my own stories in some way, you know? And so, you know, I, I also had to deal with the fact that I had a family and I needed to pay the bills. And so as opportunities came up, I was like, yeah, I got to take this opportunity. Like I was this, this place, I was working at the studio before I started at EA that was just this very, very stressful a uh, high pressure, um, not as great pay studio. And then I had this chance to work at EA and it was like, yeah, I just had to jump at that. Mm. Uh, and it was, it was much less pressure, much better pay, better benefits, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but even when I was at EA, I was like working on my comic. I wanted to tell my own stories and it was the same with Disney. I know, even though I was like, wow, I'm, I have this chance to work with these awesome artists, just some amazing artists there. And I felt like I grew so much there. Um, but I, I knew that I wanted to be doing my own thing. So that was always going to be the case. And I actually remember there was there was one particular moment that really, where it really like crystallized everything. I was, I was really working hard at, at, at Disney. I was kind of leading this group of artists. Um, we were part of this, the, a, a marketing team. We would create like marketing images. So we were basically we were basically staging screenshots for the, for the game. So I would concept, create concepts for what these screenshots are going to look like. There was a team that would kind of like rough them out. And then I would, I would do polish on these, these roughed out images. Um, and I was kind of working with them and creating kind of like, um, uh, what do you call them? Kind of like, uh, art, I guess art guides, art direction guides and things like that. And I was just doing really well with that. And I remember having a review with my supervisor and he's like, Hey, we really love what you're doing. I mean, keep, keep it up. We love to see this, the, the effort you're putting into directing this team. 
And I remember kind of riding my bike home that day and just kind of thinking about it and just being like, kind of imagining that track and just being like, oh, okay, if I really commit to this, I could maybe become an art director, you know, and, you know, that's going to be a lot of work, but, you know, maybe be better pay, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And just kind of realizing that that's, that's not, that, well, that wasn't what I wanted, mm. you know? And so the other big part of the equation though was, you know, having the discussion with my wife about it and just having a really frank talk about like, okay, well, if that's what we want to do, how do we make the finances work? And so we spent about a year just tr- keeping track of our expenses. Mm. Uh, you know, we used a budgeting program and, and it was more about, not so much about like, oh, let's stay under budget. It was more about let's keep track of what we spend. Yeah, yeah. And then after a year's time, I was able to say like, okay, here's how much we spend. Here's how much we're going to need to be able to cover our costs. Mm. So if, if I stop, and it, initially my, my pitch to my wife was, hey, we have this much savings that means that we can live off savings for three months and hopefully by that time I will have like my Patreon will be up and going and, and she's like, no, 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 I'll go back to work. I'll get a job. We know that it needs to make X amount of dollars to be able to cover our expenses. And then you can focus on doing your, your thing, which was, which is really a good idea because it took me almost three years just to finish the book. So, um, and I found that there's a lot of challenges, you know, working for yourself and especially working on a product that doesn't have an immediate market. So it's like I'm speculating on eventually spelling and selling this thing, but there isn't that there isn't that market demand that's kind of giving you that pressure to kind of get it out the door. So, um, yeah, but that once those things were in place, though, once once we had money figured out, once I knew that's what we wanted to do, um, you know, that's when it, it they're just came time when it just made sense to make the decision. And so I left and then like six months later, the studio closed down. So. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to take any credit for that. Or that it's <laughs> because I left. Yeah. I cursed yeah. it by leaving. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, having an effective plan, um, like you did, you guys did is very important. Um, to you know move forward and you know everyone's plan is going to be different um you know for me i don't um my my partner would probably do the same thing if she could um but it is at the moment challenging to find jobs and things like that so um sure and all over the world it is more challenging getting jobs as well um these days (laughs) Um, yeah for sure yeah those kind of things but yeah yeah. sorry i was just gonna say i mean i mean that this is one of the realities of being an artist that anyone that's interested in doing this needs to consider is that um the stuff you really want to do is is likely not gonna pay for itself Mm -hmm. right off the bat so you always have to have in mind some sort of like runway you have to have some uh you have to have in mind a very long runway right you want to take off but you have, have to have a runway that's as long as possible to allow you to get the momentum to, to take off. And the best runway to have is an infinite runway. <laughs> if you can have some sort of like system in place where you can like reliably know that, hey, I can work on this as long as I need to, I mean, that's even better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, other factors that go into it, but I mean, that's that's the real, I'm sure as, as you probably know, that's the real challenge is like you got to pay the bills. Mm. But you know, art doesn't always pay the bills, right? So yep. you got to figure out how to keep keep the game going, you know, until you can make it self sustaining. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've been doing it for you know at least this YouTube thing I've been doing for quite a quite a long time, um, mm-hmm. as well as art, you know. And the, you know the way I make it work is I have to you know work a full time um, job to pay the bills, and then come home and do my maybe. Sometimes I get two or three hours if I'm lucky of painting after at mm-hmm. a night, but usually about an hour and a half a night to to paint, and sure. as well as yeah. some of the weekend, depending on how much time I have to give up on that. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome. You know, make a long runway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's a. Uh... 
Yeah, it's a question about like how you want to spend your time. Like if you love doing it, then then that's great. I, I spent way too much of my time feeling I had to like suffer to to do the stuff I wanted to do. And, you know, you really got to choose the stuff you want to do as an artist. Um, and then having kids, having kids is going to throw all that, a wrench into all that too. Because then you got, you got another big time sink once you bring kids into the equation. Yeah, so definitely. Um, but they're, you know, they'll bundle joy and, um, <laughs> you, you work with them and they, they work with mm-hmm. you and whatever. Um, so, you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So you got some kids too? Yeah. I've got the one, um, yeah, she'll be running around watching her shows at the moment. Um, <laughs> you know, I know I have to, you know, I have to work with her. You know, it's, it's uh-huh. not, you know, a few years ago before I had her, it would have been as soon as I got home, you know, started to deal with painting and, and do my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's when I get home from work, um, I'm playing with my kid and, you know, uh, this family stuff, family time. And, um, yeah, mm-hmm. then once he's in bed, I get to do all my stuff. Um, so, you know, it, it, it does, you know, it does bring on some challenges, um, but, you know, you can work with them, um, it's, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it gets really fun as they get older, too. I mean, my, my young, uh, my oldest now is 11, and she's, she's getting really interested, without any prodding from me either, she's getting really interested in art and drawing and, and animating and stuff, and. So that's getting really fun too, because uh, you know art actually becomes a way that we can we can share time. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good, and especially you know, my daughter likes to um, paint and draw, and she even comes on my you know she's always because I've got like a uh, a computer chair, she's always trying to sit on that and um, go and I go on Photoshop, so I teach her a bit of Photoshop every now and again, playing. Playing with uh-huh. the, she just plays with the colors and paints interesting uh-huh. stuff. So it's always fun to to see that as well. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, do you have any any last words you would like to to say <laughs> before I die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could kind of share uh, some of the stuff that I'm 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 working on right now. So. Yeah, my, my big focus, right? I, you know, funny enough, I, I'm, I'm not creating a ton of art right now. Um, and I kind of am taking a little bit of break from that in a sense. So a lot of my focus, um, I'm really refocusing a lot on writing. That's kind of what's more interesting to me right now. Um, writing, I'm, I have my podcast um, that I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, but one of, one of my things I'm very interested in lately is the idea of like, creating community community and spaces um so it's about like uh not just the the practice of being a a solitary artist but you know what it means to kind of create um communities and 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 create places that are conducive to communities that that can create art and create kind of collaborative atmospheres um so yeah that's the type of type stuff i'm exploring right now and I talk about that on my podcast and I also, I do, do a little bit of blogging so, um, people can check out that on my, my website. And also I, I post all that stuff on medium as well. So people can look me up on, on medium if they want to read any of that. Awesome. So. Sounds cool. Yeah. All those, um, you know, links to your work, Brandon will be down in the description on the YouTube video. Awesome. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but I was, I was painting page eight in this video. Um, so, you know, thanks for everyone that did tune in and come into this, this video. Um, yeah, it's been great having you, Brandon, in this video. Um, it'll be awesome to have you in another time. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. You know, everyone keep drawing, um, keep painting. And we'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.